Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Sandra back again. We're going to be talking more about studying and learning from the Bible. And I have a special tool for you that I'm going to share uh, with you in just a few minutes. Remember we said that when you read or when someone reads a Bible uh, story to you, that there are some things that you should do to help you really understand what you had just read. One thing you should do is look. Look, who is this story about? And where did this story take place? This magnifying glass is a tool to help you remember to look for who and where in the story. Another tool to use is this one. This is a giant question mark. Look, here it is right here. And it says stop. That stop means this. When you come to a word that you don't know or that you don't understand, stop reading and get someone to help you with that. You might ask um, a parent or you might look um, on the computer in the dictionary somewhere, find out what that word means so that it would make sense to you. The next thing that I wanted to show you were these letters. Remember we said when the story is over, do some thinking. Think about what happened first in the story. Think about what happened next in the story. And think about what happened last in the story. And then the next part of that is to really think about what this story means to you. What is Jesus trying to tell me? Or what is God trying to tell me in this story? Figure out what the lesson might be in it. And the very last thing is, what will I do with this? What will I do to, for this to make sense? That's what we've been talking about this whole time. Now, I brought something I wanted to show you. This is the Bible. Some of you can read this Bible easily. And we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 15. But I chose instead of using this Bible, which is perfect but has no pictures, I chose to use this one. Some of you might have this Bible. It's a Jesus storybook Bible. And right here is the same story that I just showed you. It's right here. Now this is a Bible and the, the one I showed you before is a Bible. The one I showed you before has many more stories about Jesus. This doesn't have all of his stories in it, but it does have some pretty good ones. I'm going to read this story to you. It's called The Friend of Little Children. But before I read it, I want to show you something, something else. This, if you've been coming to um, or listening to these lessons, these Wednesday afternoon lessons, you are familiar with this. Look, there's the little magnifying glass right there, the one I just showed you. So when you read a story about Jesus, the first thing we want you to do is put in your head what's going on. What's going on in this story? What's happening in this story? Put it in your head and ask yourself the who and the where and stop. What does that mean? And then this is first, next, last. What happened first in the story, next in the story, and last in the story? Now, see all those little hearts? This says hearts. Put this Bible lesson into your heart. What is Jesus asking you to do? What is God telling you to do? And the last little yellow box says hands. And that means, what will I do with this lesson? How will I share this with people? What will this mean to, to people who, who may not know this story about Jesus? This is a little bookmark. And because it's a bookmark, this is where you keep it. You keep it right in your Bible to save your place. And then when you read a story, you have that bookmark handy to let you know uh, or remind you of the things you should do when you're trying to learn what these stories mean to you. So I'm going to read to you, and when I'm finished, I'm going to ask you the questions that are on this bookmark. So you be a good listener. Here we go. Here's the first page. This says, The Friend of Little Children. The Friend of Little Children. Jesus' friends were arguing who was the most important helper in God's kingdom. I am, James said. No, you're not, said Peter. I am. Nonsense, Matthew said. I'm the cleverest. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Yes, no, am too. This silliness went on and on like that for some time. You see, Jesus' friends had started thinking they had to do something to make themselves special or more special to Jesus. That if they were the cleverest or the nicest or something, Jesus would like them the best. They thought they had to be the best for Jesus. But they had forgotten something. Something God had been teaching his people all through the years that no matter how clever you are 
or how good you are, or how rich you are, or how nice you are, or how important you are, none of it makes any difference because God's love is a gift, as someone will tell you. The whole thing about a gift is it's free. All you have to do is reach out your hands and take it. So while Jesus' friends were arguing, some people who knew all about gifts, in fact, you might say they were gift experts, had come to see Jesus. Who were they? They were little children. Now look on this page. These grown-ups are arguing about who is the smartest, who is the best, who is the cleverest, and they're arguing with, with each other. These are grown-ups. And while they're arguing, here are some little children, and they want to come see Jesus. Their parents have probably brought them to see Jesus. Here they are right here. Look, all down here are the little kids. Can you see them? right here? They had come with their parents probably to see Jesus. Jesus' helpers tried to send them away. Look, the helpers are putting their hands out. Stop. You can't see him. Don't go that way. Stop. He doesn't have time for you. He's too tired. He's been very busy. But they were wrong. Jesus always had time for little children. Don't you ever send them away, Jesus said. Bring the little ones to me. Now, if you had been there, what do you think? Would you have had to line up quietly to see Jesus? Do you think Jesus would have asked you, how good have you been? How good have you been before he gave them a hug? Would you have had to be on your best behavior and get dressed up and not speak until you were spoken to? What would you have to do? So here are Jesus' friends right here and they're keeping the kids from going to see Jesus because they think that's the right thing to do and they think that's what Jesus would want. Look, here's one standing on his head. Here's another one. Look, they're all excited about going to Jesus, but his friend said, stop. You cannot go there. Would you have spoken when you're spoken to or would you have done just what these children did? They ran straight up to Jesus and they let him pick them up in his arms and swing them and kiss them and hug them. And then he sat them on his lap and he listened to their stories and their chats. You see, children love Jesus and they knew they didn't have to do anything special for Jesus to love them. All they needed to do was to run into his arms. And so that's what they did. Well, after all the laughing and games, Jesus turned to his helpers and he said, no matter how big you grow, never grow up so much that you, that you lose your child's heart full of trust in God. Be like these children. They are the most important in my kingdom. So all of these helpers who tried to stop the children, Jesus said, send them to me. And they ran to Jesus and he spent time with them and he talked with them and he laughed with them and he had fun with them. And then he turned to his friends and said, you be like them. You be like these children. And that's the end of the story. You be like them. Okay, now let's take a look at my bookmark here. And we'll start right here at the top. I'm gonna move just a little closer so you can see. Heads, who was in the story? Right here. Who was in the story? Well, there were Jesus' friends, and Jesus, of course, and a whole bunch of kids were in the story. And where were they? Well, we would have to read some of what happened before to know exactly where, where they were, but it seems like they were outside somewhere. Maybe they were outside and they'd been traveling along and Jesus had been talking to people and spending time with them and healing them. That's what they probably had been doing, but they were outside somewhere. Were there any words that you did not know what they meant? Boys and girls, since this was a children's book, it was written so that you would know the words and you would understand what all the words were. So we probably wouldn't identify many words right here, except I want you to be sure you know what the word gift is. What is a gift? Because that was important in this story. Well, a gift is something that someone gives you for free. If I give you a gift, I don't ask you to pay for it. 
If I give you a gift, I don't say, well, I'm giving you this, now you give me something back. It was a, just a gift. And that's what Jesus does for us. He gives us himself as a gift, as a special, special gift. Now, do you remember these? First, next, last. What happened first in this story? What was the first thing that happened? You might need to look back at the book. But I'm remembering at the first of the story, Jesus' friends were arguing. And they were arguing about who was the best. Who would be the most very important person in heaven. And they were arguing about that. They were jealous of each other. They wanted Jesus to love them the most. And they were thinking that I've done all these great things, so he must love me the best. They were arguing. And as they were arguing, some little children came up to see Jesus. And they probably came with their parents. Their parents probably brought them up there to see Jesus. And as they moved towards him, those friends of Jesus stopped them. That's what happened next. And they said, stop. He's too busy for you. He's so important. He just does not have time for little kids like you. So you go away. He does not want you or need you nearby him. Go away. And when Jesus heard that, he said to his friends, stop that. You let those little kids come to me. You let the children come. And they did. Maybe some of their parents took them, but some of them just ran up to Jesus. And they were laughing, and they were smiling, and he was talking to them. He was touching them, and he was hugging them. He loved the little kids. He loved them a lot. And you see that blue L? What was the last thing that happened? The last thing was that Jesus turned to his friends and he said this, you be like these kids. You just be like them. You have an open heart and you uh, love me and you trust me and you come to me. And don't you worry about trying to be the best at something. I love you just the way you are. You be like these little kids. And that's what we should be putting in our heads. It's just that story. Now let's look at this one right here. It says, hearts. Hmm. What, was, what did this story mean to you? Well, I've said this before. I know you've heard this from me before, but listen one more time. There's a whole lot of stories about Jesus in the Bible, a whole lot of things that he did. But boys and girls, there's a lot of stuff that he did that's not in the Bible. The Bible tells us there were many more things not written down. So if it's in the Bible, it's really, really important. And there's something that Jesus wants us to learn from this, and he wants us to put it right in our hearts and to keep it there. So what does this story tell us about Jesus? What does he want us to remember? Well, I think one thing he wants us to remember is this. Jesus loves children, and Jesus loves people just the way you are. He doesn't love you because you're the fastest runner, or if you're the best basketball player, or if you have the best toys ever. He doesn't love you because you're the prettiest, or the sweetest. He doesn't love you for those reasons. He loves you because he just loves you. His love for you is a gift. He's not expecting you to give him anything like how smart you are or how fast you can run. He doesn't expect that from you at all. You are so important to him because you are you. The next thing I think we should put down into our hearts and remember is this. Jesus is never too busy for you. Sometimes um, friends get too busy. Sometimes mom and dads get too busy. Sometimes other people just get too busy around you, but Jesus is not. You can always pray to him. You can always talk to him. You can always read stories about him, and he will share with you through those stories how he wants, how he wants you to be. He is never, ever too busy. He loves you. You're very important to him, and he will never be too busy for you. Now, look at the hands. That means, so what? What are you going to do with that? What will you do with that? Well, here's what I learned from this, and I hope you've learned from this too. I learned this, that people, people, the friends of Jesus need to know this, need to know, need, needed to know this. People need to know that Jesus loves them as they are. People need to know that they don't have to work so hard and maybe he'll love me someday because he loves you right now. He loves you just the way you are. And 
some people, some of your friends may not know that. So with your hands, with your voice, share that with people. Jesus loves you just like you are. You don't have to be that perfect person for him to love you. And the next thing I think is just for you. And here's what it is. Don't be jealous of other people. If someone, if someone else is, can run faster, if someone else can sing uh, prettier than you, if someone else has cooler shoes than you have, don't be jealous of that. Don't be, don't worry about that. Because the most important thing is this, Jesus loves you just the way you are. And he wants you to love other people the way they are too. And I am so glad to hear that story because there's some things I'm okay with and there's some things I'm not that great at. Jesus just loves me anyway. Thank you for being a good listener. You are going to get a bookmark like this. Um, Miss Jennifer in the office is working hard to make these for you. And as soon as we get them all made, we're going to mail them to you. You're going to get it in the mail. And then I want, I'm hoping that you will put it right inside your Bible. And when someone reads to you, or when you read the Bible, that you will use this to help yourself understand. We want you to put the story inside your heart, I mean inside your head, your head, so you can understand what's going on in your heart. Why does Jesus want me to uh, know this story? And in your hands, what can you do with it? How can you help other people with it? Okay, now will you pray with me, please? Here we go. <sighs> Dear God, thank you for that story of the little children. Thank you for reminding us that um, what you have to give us is a free gift, that we don't have to be the best, we don't have to be perfect to be loved by you. You love us just the way we are. You made us, God. You made us, and you know us, and we do not have to be perfect to be loved by you. Dear God, please bless these kids as we get um, closer and closer to getting to see each other again. I ask that you just take care of them and keep them very safe. In Jesus' name, amen.